everybody, it's Christina back from uh, Mixed Media and Junk Journals and today I have um, decided I'd like to make something from the coffee filter papers. These are the round bigger ones and I was watching Diana from Crates of Creativity making some flowers and I was quite intrigued by how she dyed them first. I had another little bit of a search and I did find uh, Marsha at Jelly Arts had done things with coffee papers and also Angela at Hey Angela Marie uh, makes so many different flowers from them. So I'll link them below but what I wanted to cover today was um, just my, my play fun explorations. So I made tie-dyed I, I consider they're tie-dyed. They've got that, that look of a tie-dye. This is probably the best example. So I'm going to just go through the process with you. So I wanted to have a go at making some coffee ones as well. Basically what Diana did was just bunch them like this and dunked them in. So I'm dunking them in and I'm just going to leave that there to soak as it sits there the coffee comes up into the filter. And I wanted some green and yellow. I've been doing a few Beatrix Potter journals. So um, this is the Southern Ocean Blue from Matisse and it's a structure. I had um, trouble getting it to completely dissolve because it is actually a thick paint so that's probably not the best one to use in this situation. I put a little bit of warm water to see if I can get it to blend in a bit. It's pretty well blended in so I'm not not too upset about it. And this is the Matisse yellow which is an ink um, but it's a light fast uh, water resistant ink when it's dry. So once again I'm going to just, I've got about six coffee papers and I've separated them all because uh, I had, did when I made my last batch I realised they were quite hard to separate once you, once they were wet. Right. When I made these purpley ones I had a longer deeper tub which was fuller and it was really quick but I don't mind it being a little bit slower while I'm experimenting. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you um, mix up your colours and I don't mind doing that but for this purpose I wanted to just experiment. Mainly this one I was interested in just the coffee colour. So how I got the tea dyed kind of effect was to really scrunch it up a bit. Now you have to be a bit delicate once they're wet of course. It's already ripped a little bit. Uh, it's ripping a lot and so don't do this at home folks. Um, I'll tell you why it's ripping because it's hot water dissolving the coffee so the water's actually too warm and that's dissolving the paper. I can probably still open this out and you know get something from it but quite a few of them are going to be just a bit wrecked and ripped. I left them out overnight with the heater on plastic before I tried to separate them. I actually got them you know I, I, I waited till they were relatively dry before I separated them. Just going to put that aside. I'm gonna <laughs> I clearly am not making any more coffee ones today until it's uh, cooled down a bit. But one thing that I really liked about my other tie-dye ones was that this bit that's clear, I just dripped ink into the middle. All right, so I've got a bit of um, just a normal ink that's a red and a blue. And all I did was just put some on, let it sink in, get a bit of extra colour in there. And that's where I scrunched it. And opened out. 
as you can see we're starting to get little tie-dye looks about it. So I've got my tray that I do this sort of thing on. Doesn't matter if that's overlapping. So once I've finished everything I will go and lay them all out on my plastic downstairs in the heater. Um, I wanted this to be particularly yellow however I want a bit of a green kind of a um, tone with it also for the Beatrix Potter so uh, let's just do a bit of this get that to go through scrunch it I actually haven't scrunched it super super duper hard and I never I didn't leave the purple ones in that long either all right, so these are kind of a little bit more bunched up, so a bit harder to put down flat to dry. Here's one of my bits of drying plastic. So that's the first way. Thank you, Diana. Now the second way, this is a bit similar to Marsha with her um, jelly plate effect. So I've used one that I've already dyed out of my little stack of purples. And what I've used is one of these plastic doilies that I use in my, uh, I'll, I'll link it below the um, doily dyeing in a little tub with plastic doilies. And I've daubed ink in through there. Uh, I'll show you. So this is a tea st stained one that's got um, just a grid pattern which is from a draw liner so there's many different things you can do while they're drying you can put them in with your tub and draw like you know draw liners and plastic doilies and make a whole heap let's do a bit of orange we're dabbing that dabbing that through as much as you like you can have it light or dark, thicker, thinner, however you like. And this is a stays on, so you can use it in a mixed media piece and uh, the ink will be permanent. And also, as this is a plastic doily, I can just give it a little wash with some solution and clean it up if I don't want it color to go on anything else but once it's dry using it for tea staining it should be fine okay so that's another effect so in a um, you know junk journal this is just giving you some more varieties of uh, distress spray and I had the doily over the top so I've got the pattern of the doily They're quite dark, so I'm, um, you know, obviously you're going to use different ones for different things. And this is just sitting in a, with the excess bits of tea. Okay, so that's two ways to do coffee filters. And hope you have fun with those. I'll just make a few more while I'm here. <laughs> have fun, have play, playful fun, enjoy yourself and I will see you next time. Bye for now.